Hi friends, let's discuss today about industrial pumps. As we all know, pumps play a very, very critical role in every process industry. For that matter, every industry, you will not find a house or a pump, house or an industry where you do not have the pumps. But pumps have different classifications, different uh, uh, nature, different functionalities for different applications. So today we will see what are these industrial pumps, what are the types and how they function, and what are the instrumentation and controls associated with that. This is a typical diagram of a, um, a, a typical pump which is normally used uh, uh, domestic um, or at industry level. A pump is a device which moves fluid from one location to another by means of suction or pressure. It sucks from one side and then pumps it onto the uh, other side. Pumps are primarily classified into two categories according to the principle of energy addition. One is kinetic pumps, where energy continuously added to the liquid to increase its velocity. Subsequently, the velocity is reduced, which increases the pressure of liquid. The other one is positive displacement pump, where energy is added periodically by direct application of force to one or more movable volumes of liquid. This direct application of force increases the pressure of liquid to a value required to move through the ports in discharge plane. The top one is the kinetic pumps, we normally call it as a centrifugal pumps, and the positive displacement pumps, we normally call them as reciprocating pumps in the technology. So pumps, if you see the classification, you know, we have dynamic pumps, uh, which uh, basically form into centrifugal pumps, then positive displacement pumps, you have again two main categories, rotary pumps and reciprocating pumps. And the reciprocating pumps use the pistons, plunger type and diaphragm pumps, again three categories. Whereas the rotary pumps are again classified further into vein pumps, cam and piston pumps, lobe pumps, screw pump and gear pump. So these are all the typical, but most commonly in industries, uh, the only centrifugal pumps are used in 90 percent of the applications and only in very very few occasions specialized cases we use the piston pumps and reciprocating pumps and uh, rotary pumps these are very very rare but 90 more than 90 percent of the pumps are really centrifugal pumps in industry so the centrifugal pump is nothing but the pumping liquid is first drawn into the suction nozzle and then to a high speed impeller inside the casing the impeller forces the liquid outwards increasing its velocity and pressure. Now this high velocity liquid goes through the diffuser inside the casing. The diffuser is shaped with continuous increasing area. When high velocity fluid passes through this increasing area, the velocity decreases, which in turn increases the pressure further. This is exactly what we will see. So this is the discharge pipe, and uh, this is the impeller, which is, uh, it takes in and then rotates, then this is a suction pipe. So through this, it is sucking, and then it is rotated through the impeller and then in this direction, and then it is sent out through the discharge pipe. So the fluid enters the impeller along the rotating axis and is accelerated by the impeller, flowing radially outward through the pump casing where it exits into the discharge piping. And to this discharge pipe, you can connect it to any length of the pipe for it to uh, transport it to. So the centrifugal pump working principle is like this, as we have just seen, suction, impeller, discharge, right? So um, the another thing is you have this suction, impeller I, where it sucks, uh, sucks, then the impeller, then it gradually enters the diffuser, and then it goes to the discharge nozzle. This is how the uh, takes place, then you have, uh, the you know centrifugal pump working you have a water sump and then you have a foot wall which is normal this is a strainer in order to uh, you know avoid it acts like a filter and a foot wall is a, always a one way one way wall where the water cannot go in it only takes it in one direction this is the suction pipe and then this water enter here the impeller rotates with high speed and then pumps it and this total thing we normally call it as this is a suction head and this is a discharge head or delivery head okay so when it uh, sends in water from water sump to overhead water tank 
this, this is the delivery flange. So this is exactly the working of a pump. The impeller forces the liquid outside, which create a wide or reduced pressure area. The pressure at pump inlet and suction pipe is higher than this, and liquid moves to fill the void and cycle continue. But if the suction pipeline contains non-condensable glass like air, then the pressure reduction, as mentioned earlier, merely causes the gas to expand and suction pressure does not force liquid into the impeller inlet. No pumping can be done unless the non-condensable gas is first eliminated through a process well known as priming of a pump. That's where we remove a particular nozzle where it vents out the uh, you know, air and then uh, you fill, the, fill it with water and then it builds up that suction that is required for the pump. That's exactly what we normally call it, the priming of a pump. Then you have a horizontal centrifugal pumps which are, have the shaft horizontally placed either overhung or placed between the bearings. It's widely used as they are easier to install and maintain. This is a typical uh, uh, demonstration of a um, pump and this is an impeller. This is an impeller and you know you have the suction head and then you have the discharge head on the top. So this is a typical uh, impeller and this motor is basically uh, connected to the impeller shaft okay, which rotates with great speed for it to pump. And this is exactly how a typically a pump works. And then you have a uh, top top uh, thing, base plate, concrete foundation. So you have the uh, water comes from, sucks in from top and send, uh, discharge at the top. Uh, then you have end top, uh, you have the, this is a driving uh, motor. Then the water is coming here through and then pumped up. So end and to top. Then you have a side side. So water comes from one direction and sends it to another direction. So you have a suction here and discharge here. If you see it in the top view, um, suction here and uh, discharge here. This is the top view. Suction here, discharge here. And both are suction here and discharge here. These are the different uh, configurations. Then the other side is the positive displacement pump which moves a fluid by repeatedly enclosing a fixed volume with the aid of a seals or valves and moves it mechanically through the system. This is like a, a typical compressed air uh, system where, is, where air is compressed. And uh, similarly here we are compressing the water and continuously pushing it. The pumping action is cyclic and can be driven by pistons, screws, gears, lobes, diaphragms, or veins. There are two types, mainly reciprocating and rotary, as we have just said. So if you see the rotary type, you have a fluid flow that you, you will see uh, this is rotating in this direction, this is rotating in this direction. So it sucks in here and sends it to this direction. Fluid flow happening through the casing Whenever these gears are rotating, a discharge will be created no matter what discharge pressure is. Then it cycles itself. So suction at low pressure and discharge at high pressure. Then the reciprocating pump, you see you have a continuous in a definite volume of liquid is trapped in a chamber, which is alternatively filled from the inlet and emptied at higher pressure through which the discharge. So you have the suction taking place when the piston is moving in this direction and a compression taking place, discharge is taking place when the piston is moving in this direction. So this is what is reciprocating. The piston is reciprocating to and fro, and when it is coming fro, it is sucking, and when it is coming to, towards, thing, then it is discharging at high pressure. This is how it the thing. Then the linear type, the fluid displacement takes place linearly in a straight line. This is quite and uh, vibration free, and offers the advantage of easy maintenance and along. This is a typical, pump where we normally see in um, you know bore wells okay typical hand hand boards uh, where this is exactly uh, what we normally call it as a linear type of positive displacement pump this is an example of a rotary pump inlet suction is created then both are opposite in counter current direction then the water outlet is there so you have a, a, a reservoir in suction stroke it is uh, uh, pushing it and taking from the reservoir and in a discharge stroke it is pushing into the this is closed you will see the valve action here in suction thing suction valve is open and the, from the reservoir the water is coming in in discharge stroke the suction valve is closed and discharge valve is open so that it goes into the that's the uh, exactly the function so typical control of course we all know that you have a flow transducer 
and which gives it to the flow controller in order to have a flow control valve, an opening and closing of the flow control valve. Understanding the pumping systems control method is essential to enhance efficiency, especially with the dynamic systems or those that do not operate at steady state conditions. Typical control methods are always in which the pump motor never turns off. Time clock in which the computer turns the pump on and off at predetermined times. Pressure or flow sensor feedback in which a computer monitors a pressure sensor or a flow sensor and compares the sensor value with the desired computer value, adjusting pump speed for the desired condition. A variable frequency drive controls the pump motor using its internal control to provide the desired speed. More the speed, more pumping, less the speed, less pumping. The flow control methods are several different methods to match the flow to the system requirements. The four most common flow control methods pumps are throttling, bypassing, on-off control, and variable speed drive controls. A throttling, B bypassing, C on-off control, and D variable speed drive control. The relative power consumption of the different control methods can be estimated from the area between the X and Y axis of the operating system. So you will see this is the A, I uh, you know this is by throttling the outlet. You know, C again, B is bypassing. No, you are continuously bypassing. So, this way you are throttling here. Throttling means uh, switching on and off. Okay, and proportionally controlling, opening and open. That's what is controlling. And then you have a completely bypassing and you are controlling the. So, C here you are switching on and off. Whereas, D you have a variable speed drive. And depending on the speed, you have the liquid out. And so these are all the typical uh, flow control methods that are used for pumps. And uh, you will see what exactly the area under the curve gives us the, the exact um, you know, flow. So in the throttling, this is exactly what happens. H is 12.7 here and Q is the thing and total 89, uh, total uh, the pressure. And then bypassing, you have the 82. And on-off control, you have 17. Variable speed control, you have uh, 45. Okay, so the area of the, this is exactly the power consumption. Power consumption is 89% here, 82% in bypassing, 70% in on-off control, and then 45% here. Because the pump runs 70% of the time. So that's exactly how it is controlled. So ultimately, the area of these pump curves are very, very important in controlling the thing. Then you have to see by throttling, this is, uh, this is for uh, um, bypassing, this is for throttling, this is for on-off control, and this is a variable speed drive. So variable speed drive controlling is considered to be the more efficient for different types of flows. So that's all about the uh, pumps, operation, and control instrumentation point of view. Thank you very much.